Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ryan Shelton. If you have diabetes, you know how important lifestyle, nutritional, dietary choices are for controlling your blood sugar levels. If you struggle with what to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, this video was created just for you. I want to review a 24-hour meal plan for individuals with diabetes. There are two words that I want to emphasize, colors and protein, colors and fruits and vegetables and high protein. Even though the term high protein diet varies in definition from one study to the next, evidence supports the idea that eating 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight results in less hunger, reduced appetite, increased energy levels, and preservation or increased of the blood sugar levels that you're so desperately trying to control. A recent meta-analysis study of 74 randomized controlled trials showed that eating higher protein diets significantly reduced cardiometabolic risk factors and risk factors for diabetes, body weight, BMI, weight circumference, blood pressure, triglycerides, fasting insulin, while high carb diets did just the opposite. We know that higher protein diet is better, and one study showed no significant difference between protein from animal sources and protein from vegetarian sources. What cannot be ignored, however, is the way in which food and the sources of protein are prepared. The high cost of high heat cooking in a randomized controlled study showed that high heat cooking was deleterious or had negative effects for diabetes. So we're talking about methods of cooking including boiling, poaching, stewing, steaming, rather than frying, baking, or grilling. The premise of the study was that harsher cooking methods increased the formation of advanced glycation end products or ages that exacerbate insulin resistance. The, sh the study showed that consuming age high heat cooking foods showed more signs of inflammation and more signs of glycolysis and poor glucose control. In fact, the order in which we eat our meals can also influence insulin sensitivity, even though most people don't consider this in their dietary routines. A study showed that both blood sugar and insulin levels were lower after meals that started with protein and veggies before carbohydrates compared to eating carbohydrates first. So even the order in which you eat foods is important. Finally, vinegar shots or, or apple cider vinegar before meals has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. Now, I'm going to go over some foods for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm not going to cook for you. I am going to cook for you, but uh, you will not see the cooking process. I'm going to cook these foods and plate it for you to show how delicious breakfast, lunch, and dinner can be, and how important choices in your dietary regime throughout the day, a 24-hour regime, can help to control blood sugar levels. So stay tuned, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks will all be reviewed. All right, let's talk breakfast. When it comes to breakfast, we want high protein, and lots of colors. The adage goes, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a popper. We want a lot of calories for breakfast so it sustains your energy and blood sugar levels throughout the day. Now, the recipe that I would recommend, it's just one of many, poached eggs over a bed of spinach. Why eggs? Eggs are high in protein. The yolk of eggs are high in carotenoids like lutein and zeaxanthin. Why poached eggs? Poached eggs because we're avoiding the high temperature cooking that can cause problems for diabetic patients. 
Now, how do you best poach an egg? Take a medium-sized saucepan and fill it with water, not quite fill it, but uh, place water in it. Put about a tablespoon of white vinegar to help congeal the egg whites. Take a, a wooden spoon or, or a metal spoon and start swirling the water. And then with a small bowl with the egg inside, as the water is rotating, pour in the egg and you'll get a nice, tight, poached egg. Plus, poaching an egg does not break the yolk. Therefore, the cholesterol within the yolk does not become oxidized. So it's much safer for your overall health. So poach two eggs and with a slotted spoon, take out those eggs and place it on a bed of lettuce. And we gotta have more colors. This is just, this is just yellow, white, and green. I like to go southwest with my eggs because we're able to add more antioxidants, more colors. So a bed of spinach, uh, a little bit of bell pepper, so some red, and some orange, and some yellow, a little bit of green onion as well, and to add extra protein. We put on some shredded cheese. And again, Southwest style, we add a little bit of salsa on top. Actually processed tomatoes, like tomato paste, diced tomatoes, and even salsa contain higher amounts of an antioxidant called lycopene. So Southwest style with the eggs, it is delicious. As a side to this, again, we're trying to get a lot of protein. We're trying to get a lot of calories for breakfast. I like to do cottage cheese uh, with sliced avocado. You're getting those, those healthy fatty acids from avocado, the proteins uh, in the cottage cheese. And then I add some berries, raspberries, blueberries, again, for those proanthocyanidins, for those powerful antioxidants that we know help with diabetes, and some nuts and seeds, some almonds, and pumpkin seeds, a couple of cashews in there as a side. So if you have this breakfast, it will control your blood sugar for several hours. High protein, lots of colors, healthy fats, poached eggs, and then, of course, have a cup of green tea for those antioxidants, those catechins and epicatechins contained in green tea as a beverage. And I like to do what's called a, a flaxseed flax seed slider. So I take about a tablespoon of flaxseed, put it in a shot glass, uh, fill it about half full of water. Let it soak overnight so that flaxseed helps to absorb some of that water. It's great fiber. It's a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. And you just take it down like a shot. So poached eggs, bed of spinach, some pepper, some onion, some cheese, some salsa, cottage cheese with avocado slices, berries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, whichever berries that you prefer, and some nuts and seeds. This is going to be high protein, high antioxidant to help support your blood sugar levels. While I'm waiting for my soup to finish up, I want to review some of the ingredients and recipes for a great lunch if you have diabetes. It's a salad and a soup, a soup and a salad, pretty traditional. It's high in protein, high in colors, packed full of anti-inflammatory agents, both in the salad and the soup. So the salad I like to make is a version of the Cobb salad or, or chef salad. I use greens, a mixture of spinach and mixed greens and butter bib lettuce. Uh, I use a hard boiled egg, some turkey bacon, uh, avocado sliced up, 
some cheese. Blue cheese is traditional in a Cobb salad, but you can use any shredded or sliced cheese that you wish. S uh, sliced or diced tomatoes. I top it off with cranberries, green onions, and roasted beets. Now, how do I cook my chicken? I slow cook it with olive oil, lots of herbs and spices over the stove. It typically takes about a half an hour, but those slow cooking methods are sure worth it versus high temperature cooking methods. How do I roast my beets? I put them on a, a baking sheet, drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the top, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then I sprinkle on a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of thyme, bring out the flavor of those beets, plus the antioxidant effects that you're getting from thyme and rosemary as well. A great soup for a diabetic is a bean soup because beans and legumes really help to control blood sugar levels. I like a coconut black bean soup. You get the benefits of the MCT that's contained in coconut and all of the benefits of coconut milk. So a coconut black bean soup. About a can of rinsed and drained black beans, about a can of, of diced tomatoes, uh, a can of, of coconut milk, cup of vegetable broth, two chopped green onions, and a tablespoon each of ginger, cumin, and turmeric. Two cloves of garlic, chopped, salt, pepper, and I top it off with fresh chopped parsley. Again, for the flavor and the antioxidants that parsley contains. So you combine the black beans, tomatoes, coconut milk, vegetable broth, green onions, ginger, cumin, turmeric, and garlic in a large saucepan, bring to a boil, reduce the heat, and simmer until it achieves the consistency that you're comfortable with. Typically for me, that's about a half an hour. Season with salt and pepper, it's delicious. Now this is a superb lunch if you have diabetes. Salad and coconut black bean soup. So again, the ingredients in the salad, greens, I use a mixture of, of mixed greens, spinach and butter bib lettuce, grilled chicken, boiled eggs, turkey bacon, sliced avocado, the cheese of your choice, diced tomatoes. I top it off with some dried cranberries just for those extra antioxidant effects and flavor, green onions, roasted beets, and for the dressing, I use about a, a third cup of red wine vinegar, about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, two third cup olive oil, salt, pepper. I infuse this with herbs as well. Whisk it up, and it's a great, healthy, nutritious dressing for your salad. So there you go. And then for the soup, the coconut black bean soup, a can of rinsed and drained black beans, a can of diced tomato, a can of coconut milk, a cup of vegetable broth, two chopped green onions, a tablespoon of ginger, cumin, turmeric, two cloves of garlic, salt, pepper, and parsley. A fantastic high protein, high antioxidant dinner for diabetics. Enjoy. All right, now let's talk dinner. For dinner, what I like is salmon. The type of salmon that I choose is wild salmon, typically from the Pacific Northwest or Alaska because it contains significantly less heavy metals and pesticides and other toxins that are found in farm-raised salmon. So wild salmon filet, uh, my family likes to put pesto on top. You can certainly marinate it for a bit in tamari and honey and herbs and spices. But my wife and my boys just love the simple pesto on top. Not only are you getting the essential fatty acids in the salmon, but you're also receiving the antioxidant effects of basil, which is contained in pesto. For a vegetable, I love steamed broccoli. So steam broccoli for about 10 or 15 minutes, just until the consistency is reached, and then I put on herbs and spices on top. And then my only white food that I like is cauliflower, whipped cauliflower. It's a great alternative to mashed potatoes. 
Uh, you place it in uh, a steamer for about 10 or 15 minutes just to break it down a little bit. And then you saute it in olive oil for about five minutes or so. And then add some herbs and spices to it. I use a stick blender to whip it up and it is delicious. So we have wild salmon, steamed broccoli. If you don't like broccoli, you can use asparagus or zucchini and then the whipped cauliflower, a great alternative to mashed potatoes. A fantastic dinner if you have diabetes. Hey, while we're waiting for dinner to get ready, I want to talk about snacks for diabetes. If you have diabetes, you know how important it is to keep your blood sugar levels stable and level throughout the day. So in addition to breakfast, lunch, and dinner, incorporating at least a few healthy, high protein snacks is very important. What are the options? The options are hummus with vegetables uh, or apples. The options are an avocado, a hard boiled egg, you can eat celery or apple with almond butter or peanut butter, a great snack. Nuts and seeds, a great snack, high in fatty acids that are good for diabetes. Yogurt with fresh berries, plain yogurt with fresh berries, blueberries, raspberries. You can make a tuna salad, so drain the tuna, put it in a bowl, add, I, I like to use olive oil based mayonnaise, uh, chop up some celery, some relish, add some herbs and spices, delicious high protein snack. You can also have popcorn, great snack, edamame. Unfortunately, I don't have any edamame to show you because my boys ate all that we had last night with, with their dinner, but edamame, boil for five minutes, add a little salt and pepper, delicious. So snacking is so important for diabetes. Just choose high protein snacks. All right, so there you have it team. My 24 hour meal plan for diabetes, helping to level blood sugars, control blood sugars, and potentially reverse the effects of high blood sugars and diabetes. Now, Obviously, these are just a few recipes, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. I encourage you to explore with high protein and several colors. I would recommend nine colors every single day and high protein, at least 0 0.8 milligrams per kilogram body weight of protein. I'm honored and thrilled that you're watching this video from around the world. If you have recipes and dietary regimens and plans, I encourage you to post them so that other people can learn from you. I believe in the original meaning of the word doctor, docere, which means teacher. I'm here to teach you how to control your blood sugar, but this is a community. Diabetes is tragic and it can wreak havoc on your life and your loved ones. So eating a diet that's high in protein and includes multiple colors every single day is key. So I want to teach you, I want you to teach us and the community as well. We've actually created a supplement called Blood Sugar Premier, which helps to control blood sugar levels. I encourage you to check that out. We have a website, zenithlabs.com. We have Instagram page. We have a Facebook page. Check those out. We have multiple posts on blood sugar, on diabetes, on inflammation, on cardiovascular disease. I want you to learn. I want to take you by the hand and have you in control of your health and well-being. Thanks so much. I'm Dr. Ryan Shelton.